Hello everyone, today I'll be installing my auto top off system for my RODI water. I'll be using the Tsunami AT1, which is this little guy here. Um, no lights, no bells and whistles like say the JBJ, which is pretty popular on YouTube. Um, I cannot control the auto top off with this unit, it's just pretty much plug and go. And it relies on this probe here, which is uh, air pressurized and measures the level of the water as it drops and then will trigger the pump to come on and refill the water that has evaporated. A couple of push fittings just to add extra line, uh, air line, to get it where I want it. But uh, this is basically the system here. There is one piece of equipment that's missing and that's going to be my emergency float switch that I ordered from Bulk Reef that will be coming. Um, that float switch will be mounted above the water line and will be plugged into my SL1 on my reef keeper. My reef keeper I'm going to be relying on to ensure that I don't have any flooding. When This is going to be the placement of my water jug and the RODI water. It's going to be to the left of the stand here. For me the jug is a little unsightly to be out like this so what I've gone ahead and done is I've ordered this ottoman that has a lid on it and I could place the jug inside this ottoman and uh, keep it out of view and I'll drill a couple holes in the back of the ottoman to run the airline hose. I've gone ahead and installed the Tsunami uh, auto top off system. All I did was uh, drill a little hole in the jug there and then place the line inside what you should probably consider doing is because the line is so flimsy, it won't go all the way to the bottom. Um, I went ahead and just tied a piece of dry rock to it and used that as a water weight to keep it down. And under the sump here, that's where the tsunami is, way back there. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Oh, yeah, you can. Um, so the pump is going to be plugged into the Tsunami, that's what the plug is there, it's to the pump, and the Tsunami is plugged into the Reef Keeper. Uh, one thing I did not mention is you, if you have a Reef Keeper and an SL1, you don't really need to buy an auto top off because the SL1 can do that for you, but because this particular model has the pressurized air to measure the water volume. That's why I went ahead and bought this one because uh, with the float switches they tend to have problems uh, getting stuck on as well. You can see the, the probe for the Tsunami I placed against just a standard uh, glass cleaner, magnet glass cleaner and then uh, use um, zip ties to place it on the glass cleaner. Uh, the probe comes with some suction cups, however those suction cups can uh, fail and if that float switch starts floating around you're going to have problems. So just to make it more secure I put it on this glass cleaner uh, and, and zip tied it together. So I'll go ahead and do a, a demonstration on how it works. What I'm going to do now is do a demonstration on how this auto top off works in theory. I have uh, the water line marked off there so we can see how much water is coming out. I have the jug that's going to be collecting the water coming out of the tank marked by gallons and then the auto top off water is filled to the five gallon mark. So I'll go ahead and uh, Pull some water out and see when that auto top off kicks off. Alright, we have the auto top off now running. You can see the uh, airline hose dripping its water. And it took out approximately one gallon before the auto top off kicked on. So one gallon in about a hundred gallon system. It sounds about to be okay. I know there's some sensors out there that'll 
immediately pick up water evaporation and start putting water back in. Uh, now I want to see if this float switch is going to stop the water at the water line mark. Uh, when we first started the water was just above the water line mark. Um, so let's see if it gets to the same spot and shut itself off. Alright, just for the purposes of not screwing around with my salinity, taking out a gallon of water and then replacing a gallon of water with just fresh water, I went ahead and dumped out the water that uh, I siphoned out. Got the water line right exactly back to where we started from and the auto top off shut off right when I got to that point. So it looks like that part of it's working. It looks like the auto top off will kick on when there's about three quarters of a gallon to one gallon of water evaporated from the system. And once the emergency overflow arrives from Bulk Reef, I'll plug that into the SL1 and then I'll overfill the sump and we'll see how the emergency overflow works on the system. Okay, the last part of the auto top off is this emergency float switch which I explained would uh, stop the auto top off water from running into the sump in the event that the pump failed and was stuck on. So it's just a security measure to ensure that I don't, I don't have flooding. We're going to do a little quick test run. Obviously this float switch is going to be mounted on the inside of the sump, not the outside. I have it on the outside just for demonstration purposes. So we'll go ahead and kick off the auto top off. The water is now running. You can see it coming out of the air hose. And now we'll say that the water has uh, reached this emergency float switch and is uh, pushing up on a float valve. See the water's turned off. And my reef keeper is sounding the alarm. So everything's working great. Um, if you'd like to see how I programmed, John, this alarm, if you'd like to see how I programmed the float switch with the reef keeper, I will have another video out um, demonstrating that. Otherwise, if you guys have any comments on uh, something you've seen where I could do better or change around, um, please comment. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.